What we're going to do now is uh, uh, go over frames and machine code, just for those who are having trouble. Can you guys wave if you're having trouble with machine code? Okay, so lots of people, and probably most of the people that stayed back here. Let me find out what trouble people are having with machine code. Can someone summarize it? Can you just talk in a pair and agree amongst yourselves in, in one minute or three people the, the key problem? You can't have nine things, just say one thing, okay? The thing that you need help with the most, in threes. Just do it for 30 seconds and then I'm gonna pick answers from the threes. So in threes, can you do it? Seriously. So you guys talking? Yeah. What are you guys having troubles with? Too many what? It's like the numbers, like, you know, confuse us. Yes. Like, you can have, like, a whole bunch of numbers, and you're like... It's all jumbled in together, the instructions and the code. Yeah. How, what would help you? I don't know. It's, it's hard. Like, the, yes. the frames at the bottom, and, like, just linking to the frame, linking back, and the, um, all the different, like, functions are too hard to, like, you know, grab. Yes. Okay. So there's lot, it sounds like there's lots of different things happening, and put together, that complexity just makes it overwhelming. Is that right? Yeah. Because each of those individual problems is probably addressable, but having them all in front of you and then thinking the course is rolling on and no, 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 it's just freaking out. So we're going to slow down with machine code now. So we'll leave it where it is now for a couple of weeks, and then we'll before we move on again. Do you reckon with time you'll be able to catch up to the things that have happened? Yeah, yeah. If we don't keep adding to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the plan. Thank you. All right. Shh. Put up your hand if you have a killer thing you want to say. Yes. What do you mean by the counting of the numbers? Oh, it's it's annoying to have to count on. Is that what you mean? Uh, are you saying you would like to have something the machine code do something so it does that for you automatically, or are you saying you have trouble understanding how to do that? You'd like to have an instruction that. You, you know how you can solve that problem? Can you think of a way that you could actually solve that problem? M maybe. Can anyone think of a way that you guys could maybe solve that problem? Put it in the... Oh, oh, that's really clever. I didn't even think of that. That's a quick way of counting it. Yeah, put it in Excel. I was just saying you could suggest an improvement to the machine which prints out where things are or something. I think it does. I think it took a few while ago. He added that. When He's he, done that. He's, each but, line's got Oh, Tim prints it out. I think I missed what you meant. Yes. If you don't put all the zeros in, it doesn't print the ones at the bottom. Oh, you just like a way of being able to view the whole thing? Is that, is that what you're saying? And you'd like to be able to input data without having to put all the zeros in? It's a real pain to have to count. Hey, what if it displayed, instead of 4 by 4 what if it displayed at 10 by 10 or something? Would that be better? In groups of 2 or something. Yeah. All right. Well, who, who thinks that's a good idea? If we actually just, I'm not talking about changing the machine code, we just change the emulator, so it prints it out, and you've got a bigger view of what it's printing out. So it's like 10 wide. What do you think of that? Is that good? Yes. Anyone else think that's good? Yeah. Okay. Well, we make it 16 by 16. Yeah. The input of the emulator is a grid. I know, but it doesn't have to be a grid. No. That's the thing. You could put in it all. You can put in a whole code on one line. Yes. You could space it out in a grid by yourself. Yes. And you have to count the squares. You count your grid by counting each number in row. You can easily count the squares. You'd like to be able to put it in as a single long line. Is that what you're saying? No. No, it's like you want have a set, set, set place where you put in each number. Oh, you'd like the input box. To be a, a grid in, like, it's a grid of little holes that you can type things in. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, I hadn't thought of any of these things. All right, thank, uh, Tim, are you remembering all this? We'll talk about this offline. Oh, I mean, we won't talk about it now. Uh, sorry? You got to... Yeah, no, let's not do anything now. Let's talk at the end of this. Have you got, have you got a few minutes at the end of this lecture? No. Have you got a few minutes later on today sometime? Okay. I'm here till late tonight, so... You want to just pop by quickly after six? Okay. <laughs> we can have wine and candles and... What's that? 
I'll be in the, I'll, I'll send you an email to tell you where I am. Okay. Yes? Can we get the frame buffer to not start at zero so that it just writes out the program? So you can print out bits of the program, not necessarily the whole thing? Is that what you're saying? No, the frame buffer. The moment. Frame pointer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, changes to the instruction. Look, uh, so these are suggestions are good. Shh, shh. Can I just clarify what I'm hunting for, though? I'm not exactly hunting for that, though it's good. Changes to how the way things work is easy. If it's a change to the emulator, you just have to request and we'll look at it, and if it's a great change, we'll do it. If it's a change to the instruction set you want, then you just propose it when we do the next change and that's all fine too. All those things are fine. I guess what I really wanted to talk about now is not for the people that can already do it and, and just want extra neat features, because those people are in a really good position compared to a lot of people here who are freaked out because they don't understand it. So I'm just trying to find out what, what people don't understand and how I could help you in this lecture today understand those things. Does that make sense? So one from the back, yes. Yeah, I'm just a bit unclear on like the whole mechanics of it. When, when, when we were doing the lab thing, we yes. Address, yes. All this kind of stuff. Oh, I don't know where that stuff is supposed to go. You don't understand how to construct a frame. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You, you'd like me to talk about frames? Yeah. It'd be nice if you knew what a frame was. Nice if you knew what a frame. Who doesn't know what a frame is? Okay. All right. So let me talk about what a frame is. Uh, one question. Yeah. Do you think it could put up the solutions to the labs? Because yeah. We're yeah, that's a great idea. Solutions to labs. Now, shh, shh, shh. I do have the solutions to the labs. Last week, um, some of the tutors gave their students, some of their students, for various reasons, extensions to the lab. And I can't release solutions while an extension's in operation. So it was annoying. So I've told the tutors this week, no more bloody extensions. People just get them in on time or they move on and do it next week. There's plenty of time to catch up if they miss marks. So that means I can release code. So I released the tutor solutions Tute solutions straight away at the end of the thing, but I couldn't release the labs. I can release the labs now, but between Monday and Wednesday is a whirlpool for me. So tonight I'll release all that. But yeah, on Friday I'll release the solutions to this week's lab. Yeah, yeah, as long as there's no extensions. So if anyone in your tute asks for an extension, can you just go up and just get a fish, if you've got a big fish, and just go, oh, I won't do that to you. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You can't have an extension. Can everyone do that? That's just my little assignment for you. What's that? Where are you going to get a fish from? You guys are uni students now. You don't need me to do everything for you. Yes, last, last, and then I'm going to talk about a frame. Shh. What counts as a fish? Extension. What counts as an extension? There is no extension. There's no extension. I don't like the idea of extension. No extension. You can show it to your tutor later and they'll make comments, but you can't get marks for it if you don't hand it in on time only because it slows everything down. Because when marks are in, in play, then we can't release solutions. That's all. So, but you know, you don't need to do all your labs to get full marks. So you shouldn't freak out about marks, or as I like to call them, Luke's. Let's go. Here's what a frame is. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And you should be thinking inside, the next question I'm going to ask Richard is this. So when I finish frames and say, are there any more questions, your killer question gets asked. All right, so you've got to. Your normal program, if you were to look at it while it's operating and it's in machine code, or in C even, let's suppose it's, I'm writing as a grid 4x4, four four. the flow of execution goes la 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 la, whoop, la 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 la, whoop, la 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 la, whoop, you know, this is the flow of execution. And occasionally there's a loop and it jumps back up somewhere and goes la 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 la, whoop, la 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 la, it just keeps going down executing, unless it hits a loop to jump back up. Does that make sense? Oh, I guess it could also jump forward. It could go, la 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 la, oh, jump all the way down here. La 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 la. So you've got this constant onward motion of execution. Execute one instruction, execute the next instruction, execute the next instruction, execute the next instruction. So if you want your program to do something complicated, you could just write the whole complicated thing at the top. And it would be all these la 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 la's and jumps around and everything. It would look terribly confusing. In computing, we don't like that. We don't like anything to be confusing because confusion is where errors hide in the nasty corners. We want everything to be clear and open and plain and short and simple. So we'd like to have what's happening at the top is something very tiny, la 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 la, loop, la la la, just doing this tiny little thing. And in here it calls one job. Maybe this whole section here is doing one particular job. Well, let's put that code down somewhere else. And when we want to do it, let's jump to that code, do this one other job, and at the end jump back to where we were and then keep going. 
and that lets us move all this complexity out. It's just like untangling a big long extension cord. You can leave it as a big mess or you can pull whole chunks of mess out. Do you sometimes do that? You pull out a whole chunk and if it's just got two connections and you've got one big connection there and one big mess here, you've separated the big mess of extension cord into two and presumably somewhere there's an end here. Can there be the other end out here? No, 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 because I've got two here. So I've got here, here, this is my beginning and end, and this is a function call down here. And I can, I can regard these two things as separate, and I could be untangling this bit while someone else is untangling that bit. We can work in parallel. It's just nice to solve problems by breaking them into bits. Functions are neat. Functions are neat for three reasons, and we went through that. So go and check those lecture notes if you can't remember those reasons. And one of those reasons is it just separates things out, makes it all clear, and we call that abstraction. Another reason functions are neat is if you have to do this thing six times, in six different spots, and you had it one big mess, you'd have to write it in here maybe six times in six different spots, making everything messier. How much nicer to just write it once and jump down to it six different times? But the problem is when I jump down to it the second time, where do I need to jump back? I can't leave the jump back up to here. When I've done all this little job, I've got to jump back up to just where I left. Does that make sense? Having a bit of code up the top here executing, Jumping down to another bit of code that does something and then jumping back to exactly where you were before you went down is called a function call. And this thing down the bottom is called a function. Now there's just a tiny bit of housekeeping we have to do to make a function call work and it's a pain. And that housekeeping is called setting up a frame. And you guys are getting so angry because you have to set up frames and it's frustrating and annoying. But once you've set up a frames a couple of times you start to notice that every frame you set up you set up in exactly the same way. And you stop even looking at it or thinking about it or understanding it. You just go, oh, that's the frame setup. That code's the frame setup. I won't even look that. I just, my eyes glaze over it. It's all the same every time. Frame setup. And suddenly everything gets much simpler because you can have functions everywhere. And you get your big mess and you break it into all these little bits. And you can understand it and it all makes more sense. So the payoff for understanding function, um, being able to have functions is great. The cost is you have to understand frames. It's a small cost. Once you get it, it will just seem like a joke. You'll think, oh, I can't believe I didn't get that at first. But until you get it, it seems weird. Largely because we've given it a name. If you give anything a name, it sounds confusing. If you get the name of frame, it's even more confusing. There's been evidence to show that jargon words starting with F are the most complicated and scary jargon words there are. What should I have called it instead of a frame? What's a better name of describing the area where you, you use to communicate with the function? What's that? A buffer? Yeah, that's still jargony. It's better. A notepad. Oh yeah, no, what do you do with the clipboard? It's the clipboard. Hey, here's our little paper clip. Hi, I am Richard. Would you like to see the clipboard? And there's a little area of memory over here called the clipboard. Now let's call it clippy. <laughs> so now that sounds much less scary than frame. So we need to know how to set up a clippy. So what happens is before you go down to your function, you write a whole lot of information on the clipboard. And then when the function's running, if it needs to know something, who can it ask? Clippy! Clippy who's always happy. <laughs> so it's not scary, it's good. And when the function finishes, maybe it has to write some information back to Clippy so this guy up here can see what the function did, maybe. Does that make sense? So Clippy is just this little area on the side, though I always draw it down the bottom, but it could be anywhere. And Clippy's an area that the, the program knows about and the function knows about. And any information that has to pass between these guys, instead of this guy writing it into this function, which is horrible and error prone and yucky for all the reasons we talked about in lectures, this guy just writes it into the frame. And whenever this needs information, uh, into the clippy. And whenever this needs information, he just goes to clippy. Does that make sense? Is it 20% less scary now? I, we don't even need a revision lecture anymore. Okay, this question. Yes. That is a perfect way of putting it. It's like a, a store, a storage place, like a blackboard, like a, a, a what do you call it, a, a message board, a, a storage spot. It's a storage spot. It's like, um, it's like, uh, okay, here's what's happening. There's two of us doing the job. Me and you're the function. What's your name? Sean. Sean. Okay, Sean. Sean and I are going to do the function, are going to do the work. I'm the main program, here's the function. I what I need you to do, you're good at adding up all the numbers from 1 to n. So all I've got to tell Sean is what? N. n. And he'll work out that number. So what we do is we say only one of us is executing at a given moment. Because the control flow 
It's just in one spot. It's never up here and down here at the same time. We're either doing this or we're doing that. So it's hard for these guys to talk to each other. You're either here or here. It's like saying, in this room is either me or you, but we can't both be in the room at the same time. So I'm thinking, OK, I want Sean to calculate the numbers from 1 to n. And here's what I do. I say, Sean, this area of the blackboard is just reserved for you. Close your eyes. Go out of the room. Go out of the room, in fact. Go out of the room. Quick, quick, out of the room. Can you go with him to make sure he doesn't look or listen? OK. You go with him. Keep, keep an eye on him. He's a shifty looking guy. OK. Can everyone see what I'm about to do? Shh, 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 shh. Okay. I'm leaving the room. Okay, Sean, you can come back in now. Go the other way. I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you. I can't talk to him. He's going in. I've got to leave. Okay, only one of us can be here at a time. But interestingly, I think you can still hear me. Waiting, waiting outside. Is he going to think? Is he going to realize he needs to get me to come back in? Is someone going to get me to come back in? Can I come back in? Or can, I, can I come in? They're still adding it up. Someone just told me. Tell him to go. Someone's waving at me. A very friendly student down the front telling me what to do. Come in. <laughs> okay. I'm coming in. Oh, you got to go. you got to go. I can't see you. <laughs> and I come back. Now, I have no idea what happened. I was out of the room when it happened. But luckily, we had an agreed location where we were going to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Sean. That's fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Cool. Let's have a, a, round, a hand. That was awesomely good. Does everyone recognize what that is? Yeah. That's not wrong. That's in base 6. <laughs> that is so clever. I can't even do that conversion myself. Well done. So does everyone get it? That's all a function a frame is. It's a, it's a shared area board, a storage board, where the main function writes what it, the instructions and then goes away. And then and when it goes away, it jumps down to here. So it starts this guy running. And this guy goes and looks there to do his work. And when he's finished doing his work, he somehow work, we have to work out a way that he can get the message back to me. And then he goes away and I come in and the program keeps going. Does that make sense? That's what a frame is. Yes? Like in real terms, when yes. you're writing out code, yes. does that just look like a group of numbers down at the bottom of the program? Yes. In real terms, that's an area of memory normally down towards the bottom. Let's say it's at the bottom. It's about this big. And we'll say your frame is everything between 200 and 225. That's your frame for your function, the sum 1 to n. And the frame for your function is this area here, say. This is how we're doing it at the moment. Real computers do something slightly different, but essentially the same. And um, for this function, we'll say the frame is here. And we just, every function knows where their frame is. So if I wanted someone to uh, count or, you know, produce n squared, I'd have another frame for that person. And if I wrote 7 in here and 10 in here, and I went out of the room, and just as I went out of the room, I called the n squared guy, he's not going to look in clip, he's not going to look in the frame for someone to n, he's going to look in his own frame, which is the squared frame. So we're going to set up a frame for every function. This is obviously a bit expensive if you've got lots of functions, because you've got to set lots of area, reserve lots of areas of memory. Uh, and this is a big issue for us, because our chip has such a small amount of memory. So there is a clever way of saving a bit of memory that we're not going to talk about at the moment called stack frames. So don't worry about that. We're just talking about frames at the moment. Yes? Also, because functions have scope, don't we have to save the registers? In uh, yeah. Now, you have to do some other stuff in here. You use, this, you use this board not only for taking messages from me, you use it for your own temporary storage. Like, you had to do some calculations then, didn't you, presumably? <laughs> if he just came along with the eraser and thinks, I, I need to do some complicated things, and he starts just rubbing out bits of memory to do his calculations, that's no good, because maybe I needed that for the lecture, and now that's rubbed out, the lecture's not going to make any sense. He needs to know a safe area where he can store all the stuff he's going to do. And where is his safe area? His frame, his clipping board. His, yeah. So he does all his calculations in this little square on the blackboard. He can do whatever he damn well wants in here. No one else will ever look in there, and I will never look in there, and it's just for him. 
and that's called scope. Yeah, anything that's in here, no one else, everyone promises they won't look at. They're allowed to look at, but everyone promises they won't look at, and that's called scope. So the scope of the things in here is just, um, just uh, the function. Now there were a couple of hands. Is that a hand or a stretch? No. Stretch. There was another hand. Yes. So can main write to a function frame? Main can write to a function frame. Yeah. Main has a function frame as well. The operating system, when it calls main, stuff, chuck stuff in main's frame. Okay, and it can read it, write to it. Yeah, it can read it and write to it and do all that stuff. In fact, let's look at main. We wrote a main a second ago. Let's look at it. Just trying to get this board down. Here's the function we wrote. It's main. Does it have any variables that belong to it? What? E count. Oh, arg, arg C and arg V are the information passed in. So when main starts, that information is in main's frame. Let's say main's frame is main's the main frame. <laughs> the main frame. It's confusing, isn't it? Main's frame is over here because the operating system calls it, and it writes in here arg C, whatever that is. Maybe it's seven, and arg V, blah blah, whatever that is, and that's something. Okay, it writes it in there. So that something is stored in main's frame to start with. What else would be stored in main's frame? E count, yeah, main needs some variables. It stores its variables in the frame. So E count will be in there somewhere, and letter count will be in there somewhere. And that's why when we did the ampersand thing, we saw the variables and we found their addresses. Remember they were all really big numbers? Even though the address of the function was up the top of memory, did we look at that? If you said print out ampersand main, it'll print out the address of main, which is where all the main code is. That'll be a small number up here. And if you print out ampersand e count, the address of e count, it'll be a big number, bfffff, it'll be down here, because it's inside the frame, it's not mixed up with the code. So inside the frame is the parameters passed in, the variables that we use, and also because we need to save the registers. You remember there's this problem that there are these few registers that are special spots in memory. Let's just put them on the board here. They're called R0, say, and R1. Now, all the instructions use these registers. When I'm out of the room, you come into the room and these registers contain the value 7 and 12. Because that's when I'm in the middle of doing stuff. I've stored stuff in those registers. You come in to do your calculations. His calculations are going to have to use these registers. Because you probably noticed all the answers go to registers and all the interesting things happen with registers. He's going to need to use these registers, but I'm already using them. Is it safe for him to just zap these values? So what does he have to do? has to save them. So he says, okay, R07. So in his own frame, he'd probably say, don't forget that it was a 7 and a 10. Don't forget that. Oh, a 12. Oh. And then he goes, ha, 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 zap them, and he uses them as much as he wants. And at the end, just before the function finishes, what does he do? He's about to go to the room and get me to come back in, and he goes, oh, hang on. I've put my own junk in here. I better write those values back. And they were 7 and 12. Finished. Okay, Richard, you can come back in now. Does that make sense? Whew, that's a very abstract definition of a frame. I haven't actually written any code. Does that help anyone? Yeah. Yes. Does that leave questions? Next question. Someone ask a question. That's what a frame is. Or as, yes. Yes. Uh, isn't R0 the return value? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, um, now, look, we do have a rule that no one is allowed in this course if they wear a Google T-shirt. <laughs> so Rupert is stuck up the back with his Google T-shirt because we'll have no Google in this room. This is a Google-free zone uh, because, uh, because Google's in enough places already. We need to have a few spots which are just for us. So, so, uh, but we love Google, don't we? We love, we love Google. Um, I can't remember the question because the Google stuff was so interesting. <laughs> Rupert, you said something. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when I left the room, you wrote the answer in here. And often that's what happens. Often the answer gets written. Often the answer gets written in the uh, uh, clippy, the frame. Often that's where it's written, and then I come back and I look there to get the answer. But in our machine, we made it simpler. There's a simpler way of you getting the answer back. Do you remember what it is? How you get the answer back? Does anyone? You, do you remember how a function would return its value? It stores it in a special spot, not in the frame, but. Uh, not R3, but close, in R0. So the deal is, when the function finishes, he rides back into R0, 1204, his answer value. And the only buffer he needs, the only uh, registers he needs to save are the other ones, not R0. 
So whenever you call a, f um, a function, you know your R0 is going to get smashed by the function because it's going to return its value in R0. Does that make sense? So he didn't actually need to store that 7 for R0. He could have just remembered the 12. And when he leaves, all he's got to do is put the 12 back. He'll write his answer in R0. And that's very convenient because it's already sitting in a register ready for the calling program to use. Presumably it wants to use this answer. It's going to have to load it into a register before it can use it. This is quite convenient. It puts it in the register straight away. So thank you, person at the back that asked that question. Yes? Um, what's the frame pointer? Oh, what's the frame pointer? Uh, can, all right, so let me uh, write the questions on the board because I have a feeling we've only got time for one more question in any detail and maybe super fast on the other. What's a frame pointer? Any more questions that people are just dying to ask? Thank you. Yes? You again. <laughs> just another question. Uh, with the return address, you know how like when the main function jumps to when the main program jumps jumps to a function yes. uh, and then it has to jump back, where do you store the address that it jumps back to? Okay, that's a good point. Okay, return address. Let's do both of those things. We can do both. Let's do them in reverse order. Return address. Now here's our main. It calls this function twice. You see I've sort of drawn a picture indicating it happened twice. The only difference is the values it passes down each time into the function and where the function has to jump back to when it's finished. If we call the function from here, then when the function's finished, we have to jump back to the instruction just after here. Yeah, it has to resume going from where we were up to. Does that make sense? If we call the function from here, on the other hand, then when it finishes, it has to jump back to just after there. The place it jumps back to we call the return address. And that's what has to be loaded into the instruction pointer to be the next instruction, the address of the next instruction to be executed. Does that make sense? So how does this function know what the return address is? Because it depends on where it's called from. And it has no clue about where it's called from. It only knows it's been called. Well, the person calling it in the frame has to write, along with all the other stuff, at the bottom, or somewhere, they have to write the return address. Which is like me saying, okay, someone to N, I'm giving you a job, and I would say, I want you to sum up all the numbers from 1 to 100. Um, I don't have to give you any more data than that. And, and P.S. I'm in the loo. Notice what happened last time. When he finished, I couldn't come back in. He needed to go and tell me he needed me to come back in. So I go to the loo, you run the function, you do the job, and at the end you go, oh, he's in the loo, I better go and get him from the loo. And then maybe I call you another time and I say, P.S., I'm up the back with Rupert. So you finish doing this and you got the back to get me. So you have to write in here the return address, which is at the end of the function running, where the control flow has to return to, and it returns to our key. Does that make sense? How do you change the return address? That's a good question. It's, the calling function knows what the return address is. It knows, oh well, I'm calling it, I'm at this instruction now when I'm calling it. When it's finished, I need it to jump back to here. And that's instruction number 12, address number 12. So the calling guy knows, it's easy for the calling guy to work out, I want to jump back to 12. So it's easy for it to write 12 in the, in the frame. But how does the other function jump back to 12? Well, what it's got to do is read that value in from the frame, and it's got to write it into the end of its execution. So the end of its execution is presumably the function, if you were to look at the function, it's probably doing blah, 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 whole lot of beeps, and then at the end there's a 13, 0, say, which means unconditional jump back to address 0. And we're not expecting that to stay 0. Somewhere inside the function here, there'll be an instruction to read in the number from there, which was 12, and to write it out to this location here. So the function does that itself. So the function changes the last value of the function and then it jumps back to that. That's how we have to do it with the chip as it's designed at the moment. It's annoying to do that. If only there was an easier way, and we'll see later on chips have got easier ways of jumping back than that. But it's the same idea, it's just an easier way of doing it. Exactly the same idea, it just takes less instructions. That's return address. The other question was, what's the frame pointer? Well, I could agree with you in advance that every time I call you, this is your frame. The other way of doing it is I could say in advance to you, 
Over here is a special area called the frame pointer. And in here, I'm going to write the address of your frame. So it's like you're going to a medical center. You just get the next available doctor sort of thing. You don't always see the same doctor. You could have it that you always saw the same doctor, but obviously that's inefficient because if all the people seeing that doctor are sick, and yeah, it's better to be able to share them around. So normally the deal is you've got a receptionist, and the receptionist says, you can go into room number seven now. So in the frame pointer here, I could write, say, A, and I could have three programs, frames in the program, A, B, and C. You come into the room, you look at the frame pointer, and you say, oh, my frame today is A. This is where I'm going to go and look and get the information which is giving me. This is where I'm going to save all the registers. This is where I'm going to get the return value from. Does that make sense? So the frame pointer would obviously be set by the calling program. It would think, I want him to use this frame. I want him to use this frame. Does that make sense? So the frame pointer is a register that contains the address of the frame. Does that make it clear for everyone? Modulo this last question. You've got to practice. Here's my plan. I'm away for a week. We're not going to increase the complexity of anything. During this week, I just want you guys to practice, to try things, to fiddle with it, and make sure by the time I come back, you understand it. I'm going to post the lab solutions, so you'll get to see all the lab solutions, and I want you to practice the whole time I'm away. Don't come back and be, be all flabby. I want you to come back and be fit and understanding machine code. Yes, come down the front and ask me. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. No worries. So that was useful? Yes, good. good. I reckon we've got five minutes if anyone wants to ask more questions too. Just one on one. Um, kind of put like some real like simple, really basic questions up on things so yeah. we can kind of work through and build up. That's a great idea. If we go straight to the really hard questions, yeah, like yeah, yeah. shit, we get all stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people are doing.